Hello and welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're taking a look at the Creativity Elf, a new Core XY out of Shenzhen, China. So before we do that, roll those credits. Okay, so, um, so today we're having a look at the Creativity Elf. Not Creality, Creativity. Okay, um, so uh, bearing in mind how popular Creality is, uh, the name, uh, pretty, yeah, I mean the name is what it is, do you know what I mean? I'm sure that if you translate it back into Mandarin, it probably is something completely different. Um, but, <laughs> but anyway, so... Um, some key features about this machine that I really genuinely love. Let's go over some of the basics to begin with. So, build volume is uh, is 300 by 300 by 350 as advertised. However, I've actually found you can print right to the edge of this bed, and the edge of the bed is 310. So, um, so you can sort of try to get as much you can try to get as much out of the bed as you want to. The bed comes with two options. You can either use the standard bulldog clip and it's like an ultra base, very similar to the base that's on a sidewinder. It's like a textured glass and when it cools down, um, your, your print pretty much releases straight off. Um, I use a little bit of hairspray as a releasing agent. Um, the one thing I would say is that if you have a power cut or you are one of these people who doesn't like leaving their printer unattended and they pause their print overnight, if the bed cools down, your print will come off of this build plate. Um, when, when the build plate cools down, you literally just, you just lift things straight off. Um, it also comes with a second option, comes with a Creativity branded, uh, very nice, flexible magnetic build surface. Um, I don't use it for one reason, and that is, um, well, two reasons, I suppose. One reason is that no matter how hard I try, I can never get that magnetic, the magnetic sticky part down without there being some bit of detritus or something underneath it and causing a bump in my bed. Um, the other is that, generally speaking, with these types of um, magnetic beds, when you go up to higher temperatures, i.e., you know, sort of the 100 degrees you might need for um, 100 degrees you might need for ABS, uh, they lose their magnet. They they sort of <coughs> impacts their magnetic field, or they lose their adhesion, or whatever. All right, so I don't really use them. Um, you also get a sort of weird little 200 gram spool of PLA, I think. Um, you, get, uh, you get yourself your mandatory spatula, you get yourself a nice little SD card, some spare parts, but they are a nozzle cleaner, a spare nozzle, um, and uh, some Bowden. There's also some spare spring washers in there. You get a pair of nail clippers. I have literally no idea why. You get your standard pair of, of blue handled pliers. They're in my office. You get the world's worst spool holder. Um, it is just a single right angle bracket and I don't actually think it's wide enough to hold any real spools on. A little bag of extra screws, you get a USB cable that requires you to mount your, your PC inside of your printer so that you can, uh, so you can use it. And you get a manual. Um, the manual is, you know, so, so this comes um, as, a, as a sort of relatively pre-built kit. Um, the top assembly is all completely built for you. You attach the four corner posts, you attach the bed, you put these in, you attach these plates, and you're pretty much done. You stick your extruder on. Um, so, main features of this printer. Features a very nice touch screen, features a filament sensor, um, you, have, uh, you have dual Z end stops. So if your bed ends up being, um, so if your left plate is lower than your right plate, for whatever reason, when this levels, it will level those two off. I really love that. Linear rails on, um, on the X and the Y. Um, it would have been nice to have seen linear rails on the Z. I would challenge that it's probably relatively easy to do if you wanted to. Um, it's just that there's not really anything 
down the bottom here for you to fix it to. So um, this, this metal sheet doesn't really give you anything to fix another couple of extrusions to, which is a shame, because I would really have liked to have seen that. Um, but other than that, uh, genuinely really impressed. It is um, a, uh, a BMG clone extruder, but they've mounted it remotely. I don't really, I mean, so it's still dual drive, and, um, and it will still, you know, it's driven the filament that I've put through it really well. Um, we've got some examples of stuff that we've printed. I'll show you those in a second. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine, but it's still a Bowden, as far as I'm concerned. You know, that, that's not a direct drive setup. Um, their hot end cable is a VGA all-in-one. Great for, um, for clean and aesthetic reasons. Not necessarily ideal for, um, for any sort of upgrading that you want to do. Um, in th so there is, a, uh, there is a small breakout board in this part of the extruder here. Um, and uh, you can fit a BL touch to that. There is, a, there is a BL touch out port in there for you to be able to just put one straight in, should you so wish. Um, my original plan was to do a BL touch on this, and I've just decided I don't need it. Um, I leveled the bed, it, it hasn't required re-leveling, um, it's going down really nicely. I couldn't tell you whether or not these rails are real um, uh, high precision rails, although there's not any, there's no slop in them or anything. Um, everything moves nice and, uh, nice and securely. It's a very nice printer. For, for a Core XY, um, it, will go, it will go nice and fast. It's got the silent stepper drivers and everything else. Um, let's take a quick look at some of the things we've printed and then we'll talk through some of the issues that we had. Right, so this is um, a spiral cube. It's something that I really like to do because you print it without supports. And, um, and it does do a decent job of testing overhangs and part cooling. Um, this has a little bit of a stringing issue for the most part. The bit that I found um, a little bit disappointing is the part cooling on the base here. You can actually see where it sort of struggled to do some of that bridging. I have scaled this up 200% in its original design and without supports that isn't terrible. It's just not necessarily as beautiful as I would like it to be. Then we have this. So this is the spiral vase, or vase. Um, the surface finish is really, really nice. Um, while I was doing this, I did have some issues, I don't know if you can see, with blobbing. Um, most of that, if not all of that, is to do with a combination of part cooling and, uh, and retraction settings. So I just needed to fiddle about with those to get those going well. Then we bring ourselves on to this beast. So everything that's in green and everything that's in white printed on the Elf. Um, it printed really, really nicely. All of this model printed on my longer. Um, and I've already painted that because you don't need to see the quality of that. The issue I had again was I had a lot of stringing. Now, to be fair... Um, I've since printed this, this is a green E-Sun filament, I've since printed some of this on my um, artillery sidewinder, which is a direct drive. I've never had any issues with stringing with that, but I did have some issues where, um, where, the, where the green E-Sun started to, to string as well. But overall, the print quality on this is really very, very nice. Um, there were a few pieces of um, of this body that I did on the uh, on the on the elf, but if we bring you in along the side here, I'd like you to take a look at how some of this part here printed. So there's still some finishing up to do with this. This is literally raw off the printer and glued straight on. You can see that I had some issues with stringing. Um, around some of this and it's required me to sort of scrape a little bit this part though admittedly there's still some supports in here this part printed on the elf once i had tuned the um the, the retraction properly and this is a really let's see if we can get right in there this is a really really nice finish on these parts so this bit here 
This is just supports that need to be removed. But really, really nice finish. Some really nice shine to the outside, so the extrusion is nice and consistent. Uh, the part cooling is fine. Um, but what we will do now is we'll just show you the tool head of the printer. So, those well versed among you, um, or some of those of you who are, who are relatively new who have had any Creality machine, um, will notice that this is basically an Ender 3 or a CR10 tool head. The only small difference is that this has got part cooling on both sides in the form of two radial fans and it's got the central fan. But Looking at it, this is exactly the same as a Creality tool head. In fact, if you were to buy, say, a CR, if you were to buy the Ender 5 Plus, I would challenge it would look exactly like that on the tool head. However, as I have said already, this does come with linear rails. This is a true Core XY because X and Y motors both have to move to produce a single vertices of motion. Um, so, uh, so it, it is a true Core XY. Um, it comes packaged really well, and there's, I'm not complaining necessarily that this is the same as the Ender or Creality tool head. I just find it a little strange that the tool head is designed exactly the same way to the point as to which they're still they're even using the same um, they're even using the same. Um, actual heat sink and, 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 and hot end assembly as well. But that being said, still very nice. So, on to final thoughts. So, final thoughts. Um, frankly, it all comes down to price. This is 375 English pesos. Um, for 375 pounds, this is a fantastic machine. I, um, I paid a little extra to have what was pitched as direct drive. Um, it isn't direct drive, it's dual drive. So it has two cogs in here that drive the filament through, but there's still quite obviously a massive Bowden tube there. Like it's not, that's not direct drive. But anyway, um, that's probably down to me not reading properly rather than, uh, rather than trying to be willfully misleading. Um, it works great. The print quality genuinely is really good. I'm, I'm impressed with the print quality. Um, I haven't pushed the speed on it yet, although being a Core XY with linear rails, I should be able to push that speed a little higher than normal. Um, I've printed from a 0.2 layer all the, day, all the way down to a 0.12, and it has done that flawlessly. The bed is brilliant. Um, frankly, this, um, this is incredibly comparable to a Sidewinder. Um, it, you lose 50 mil on the Z, but you gain the rigidity of a Core XY, and you gain the, the sort of the rigidity of, of, of linear rails as well. Um, I, I am, I am honestly really impressed with this machine. Uh, it say super silent drivers. I think they're 2209s in this. Um, it's got a nice touch screen. The UI is easy to use. They've thought through a couple of things. So things like when this is printing, um, the screen goes to sleep after a couple of minutes so that it's not, you know, it's not bright and blaring out. Now, it's not an issue for me because I print out in the office and I'm not out there over night time. But there are a lot of people who complain about the fact that their Prusas or their, or, or their Longas or whatever have, um, that, that their screens are on all the time and you, you, your room is bathed in this blue or green glow. Um, not an issue with this. The bed, the fact you get two beds um, for £375 is genuinely quite impressive, if you ask me. Um, I really like the overall build of the machine. Putting it together was nice and easy. The instructions were very easy to follow. Um, I say all this top piece all comes pre-assembled, so you don't have to build the extruder or anything like that. You know, it's one cable that you have to plug in at the top and then you just plug in your stepper motors once you've screwed it on. Um, it's half a dozen bolts to put it together. Build was probably 25 minutes and a couple of references to the, um, to the, to the guide. I really like it. Um, so you can add auto bed level if you wish to. Um, I have chosen not to. I just don't think it's required for this machine. Um, maybe if I was using the, uh, maybe if I was using the magnetic build plate, 
hmm, maybe then I decide that I need it, but I just don't feel like I need it at the moment and I don't see the need to overcomplicate the machine. Um, yeah, thermal runaway is enabled. I have checked the firmware to make sure that it is. Uh, the filament sensor's on there and seems to work and you know, it's, it's a great machine for the price. For what is, um, so if I recall correctly, uh, the cheapest I've found a Sidewinder X1 is about 385, and that's on T-Tech 3D in the UK. Um, this is 10 pound cheaper. Would I buy this over an X, over a Sidewinder? That's, that's difficult. Sidewinder is probably one of my favorite machines at the moment. Certainly one of the favorites that, that we have. It's one of my go-to machines. Um, you lose 50 mil on the Z, that feels like it was unnecessary, bearing in mind that all they had to do was extend these extrusions and you would have got that classic 300, 300, 400. Um, but to be honest with you, it's a great machine. It, 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 it prints really well, which is at the end of the day is, is all that really matters. Um, it seems to be built very solidly. The, uh, the, the salespeople were very responsive when, um, when, I, when I messaged them. Um, one of my bolts that, um, that this goes together with, one of my bolts um, didn't have a head. It was just, it was just a, solid, a solid bolt with no, with no hole for an Allen key, which was really weird. And then they just pointed out that in the box, they actually give you spare, um, they actually give you some spare bolts on it. I didn't actually realise that they gave you spare bolts because I was so eager to tear into the machine that I didn't bother looking through for a, a small bag. Um, so that was a really easy fix. It was just use the bolt that wasn't ruined. Um, yeah, nice and easy. There are, if I've got any complaints, it's this. So, and this is a completely personal complaint because of how my office is set up. The power comes out of this side and the SD card goes in this side. I would have much preferred it if the SD card went in at the front, just for easy, ease of access. I will probably end up putting an SD card extender on here and then setting up the, the SD card so it sits on here or something. Um, and with the power coming out of the side, I have to run my power cables a little bit differently. But to be honest with you, if, if that's your only complaint about a machine, a minor inconvenience for me, because of how I have my office set up, then I think you're probably doing all right at that point. Um, I may even set up one of the Wi-Fi SD cards where you just drag and drop stuff into it, you don't have to worry. Um, but I'm genuinely, I'm impressed with it. It's really nice, solidly built, silent drivers, you know, linear rails, it, it's ticking a lot of boxes. The right price, 375, um, you'll pay, uh, 520 I think for an end of five pro an end of five pro is smaller than this because it's 230 by 230 by 300 um, and if you went for the plus I think that's 350 by 350 by 450 maybe I can't really remember um, but anyway they're both more expensive than this machine is so uh, and neither of those have linear rails um, neither of those have dual drive extruders, neither of those have touch screens. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's a real, I think this is a real package. So well done creativity for, uh, for producing a very nice machine and uh, keep an eye on the channel guys. We've got a few more reviews coming up and we've got Mike's Mad Max model almost finished. So that's going to be a really cool project to, uh, to advertise as well. Thanks for joining. Bye.